Hello, everyone. This is a video abstract for my new article titled Growth Hegemony and Post-Growth Futures, a Complex Hegemony Approach. So to give a general overview of this article, uh, it has two main goals. So first is to analyze the key mechanisms that reproduce the hegemony of economic growth, basically which reinforce the common sense that economic growth should be a core objective uh, for states. And then second, and following this, it aims to map out the key sites of struggle and the key mechanisms uh, that might make a global transition to a post-growth world order possible. So I argue that these are some of the most pressing questions where uh, critical IR scholars are well-placed to advance the conversation on post-growth. Uh, the existing literature on degrowth and post-growth th thinking and ecological economics, it tends to be fairly weak on the question of, of po political and strategic thinking, and especially at the global scale and thinking about how we might actually get a post-growth transition at the global scale. And so uh, for scholars who are interested in emancipatory uh, futures and, and change in, in global politics, I think is this is where we need to be intervening. So to do this, I start... Uh, my intervention by, I engage with traditional Marxist analyses of growth, uh, because these kind of um, Marxist structural understandings of growth are kind of key to much of the degrowth literature, as well as uh, contemporary ecological Marxist uh, critiques of capitalism and economic growth. And so the, the, the Marxist view is simply that economic growth, it's, a, it's an effect of capital accumulation and capitalist relations of production. So it's kind of an epi epiphenomenal effect of these underlying uh, power relations. So I'm not, I don't claim that this is wrong by any means. It clearly gives us an essential part of the story. But I argue that this gives us an overly structuralist understanding of growth and that it downplays the role of culture, ideology, and militarism in reproducing uh, the political and economic structures that underpin uh, growth. Uh, so it gives us kind of a, a fairly simplistic understanding of why why growth uh, is is constantly reproduced and difficult to challenge, and it, it doesn't it doesn't give us a very useful strategic analysis of how we could challenge the hegemony of growth. It it basically just tells us well growth is simply fundamental to capitalism, and so if we're going to challenge capitalism or sorry if we're going to challenge growth, we simply have to abolish capitalism. And so it simply gives us this kind of totalizing uh, form of critique in this sense. And so in contrast, I think we can identify sites of struggle uh, within capitalism that could push it in more post-growth directions. And so I don't think that this would necessarily mean completely abolishing core capitalist institutions like, like markets, private property, and wage labor. And so I don't necessarily disagree with the view that growth is essential to capitalism, but I do think that when we, I think that there's more messiness in terms of uh, thinking about possible hybrid political econo economies that kind of combine both capitalist and socialist elements that might be viable post-growth futures. And so instead of kind of all or nothing, I think it's possible to think about more complex hybrid formations in ways that are ignored by Marxists. So to develop this kind of alternative analysis of kind of the underpinnings of growth and what a post-growth future might look like, uh, I draw on Neo-Gramscian theory. And I'm especially interested or influenced by emergentist or complex uh, complexity theory inspired understandings of hegemony. Uh, so the work of Alex Williams is someone I draw on uh, in this article, for instance. So from this view, economic growth, it's not just reducible to capitalism, but it's a complex hegemonic order in its own right that emerges from the relations and feedbacks between political economy on one side, but also ideology and also geopolitical structures like militarism, geopolitical competition. And so by developing this more kind of multidimensional analysis of growth hegemony, I argue that this can help us identify points of leverage or sites of struggle where uh, grassroots social movements, uh, environmentalists, others seeking post-growth futures can intervene in order to help push the world system towards alternative uh, post-growth futures. So that's the initial setup in the paper. 
And then in the middle section, I look more closely at the key underpinnings. So I look at political economic structure, ideology, and militarization, and the roles that these play in reproducing growth. And then in the next part of the paper, I consider the question of what a post-growth future might look like. And so as I mentioned before, I think it wouldn't necessarily require a total abolition of capitalist institutions. It could look like a more messy hybrid political economy in which capitalist institutions are subordinated to alternative state functions like security and social welfare. Uh, but then I also argue that subordinating capitalist power and subordinating uh, kind of markets and profit to these alternative uh, goals uh, would not be sufficient uh, by themselves for a post-growth future. At the same time, there would have to be radical culture, cultural and ideological shifts uh, away from dominant narratives of progress and, and ideas about well-being associated with consumerism and, and economic growth uh, generally. So there would also need to be these cultural and ideological shifts. And then at the same time, there would also need to be radical shifts in the nature of security or how security is understood and practiced. And so in particular, rather than prioritizing geopolitical competition, uh, and military defense, there would need to be a shift towards more cooperative notions of global security uh, that uh, focus on climate mitigation and social security for uh, for their citizens. And so then in the final part of the paper, I sketch a scenario to give us a sense of how might this kind of post-growth transition actually happen. And so this is, of course, a tall order. It's hard to imagine this happening, but I try and give a plausible account of what what this might look like. And so I argue that there's three conditions that might make this possible. So first would be a worsening crisis of capitalism. As climate change gets worse, as we are dealing with multidimensional shocks to the global economy and food and energy systems, that this is good, this may make it harder for states to sustain growth and thus it might create opportunities for post-growth movements. But then second, there in this context, there will have to be strengthening grassroots movements, able to form a counter hegemonic bloc that can push uh, states, especially in the global north, uh, towards a more post growth orientation. And then third, again, in this context of ecological breakdown and strengthening grassroots movements, there would also be, I argue, a potential to push states uh, towards uh, alternative understandings of security, especially if all the key powers in the world system, in the EU, the US, and China are simultaneously dealing with these worsening crises that they might have an interest in cooperatively agreeing to reduce military spending and shift towards different, different security priorities as opposed to military competition. So that's the article in a nutshell. Please read and uh, let me know what you think.